All right, we finished planting the veggie patch, but now how can we protect it and make sure that it really is a successful veggie patch? We get companion plant. Yep, we're gonna bring some flowers, some alliums, some herbs, and this will help it really pollinate. It'll protect it. It sometimes even improves the flavor. So let's go on in and let's start companion planting. The first flower we're going to bring in is the petunia. Why a petunia? Well, I always plant these with my tomatoes and with my peppers. One, it keeps the ground cool. Remember, peppers don't like a hot soil. This will keep it really cool. But secondly, it brings in some pollinators, bees, hoover flies, but it does more than that. It, you might even say this is a carnivorous plant. Why? It has sticky hairs on its base, which traps like aphids, nematodes, and it sucks everything out of it for the nutrients. It's kind of scary to think about it, but this um, beautiful flower is known to represent anger. I wonder why. The floss flower is the next flower. It's actually a flowering herb because it could be used medically. But I bring this in for the eggplant. Remember, the pepper plants like the humidity, they're tropical, but the eggplant, which is from India, doesn't like moisture on it. Actually, it causes a lot of diseases. It also doesn't like really hot soil. So I'm gonna put the floss flower in front, but not throughout. I have a surprise for that next. But what does the floss flower do besides look beautiful and keep the soil cool? It brings in some great pollinators. It brings hummingbirds, which is just beautiful, butterflies, but bees, it brings in bees and we need those. So I'm gonna put these in front. The last flower that I'm gonna put in the circle gardening is the Cosmo. And I have great memories of the Cosmo. When my daughter was younger, you know how they ask for money and you let them buy a present for you for Mother's Day or the holidays? Well, I was always at the nursery, obviously. And um, she takes the money and she buys Cosmos. And I really never paid attention to Cosmos. Obviously it became one of my um, favorite flowers. And it kind of fits me. It's like the wild child. It's got all these great feathery foliage, beautiful flowers. So what's that got to do with the garden? Well, one, it brings in pollinators, but if I put it one in between each eggplant circle, it's a raised garden, it will shade the eggplant, but also it's considered a sacrifice plant because the aphids all are attracted to that. So it goes to this and, and it sounds horrible, but when they uh, go there, then you cut it, you know what I mean? And then rinse off the aphids in the sink and you have some cut flowers. And the more you cut it, the bushier it gets. So it doesn't really hurt it because you're gonna use it for cut flowers anyway. So let me put that in and then we're done with the circle gardening section, except for some alliums. And we're gonna do that at the end. But, um, and then I'll show you what we've done. There are three circle gardens for peppers. And at the end of each pepper circle are two petunias and they really spread. Then with the eggplants, we have the floss flower. There's three of them. Oh, this will be stunning. And then between the four eggplant is a Cosmo.
Okay, now we have some raised beds. All right, we're at the three beds that are made for the tomatillas. Now, we have the tomatillas in, we have the dill. The dill is important because it's edible and it attracts hoover flies. The hoover flies eat the larva of the aphids and the thrips and other things, which is great. Stops over a population. So, in the garden. So then, on each end, we're going to put the beautiful marigold. I love the cheerfulness of the marigold. It just adds color to each bed. But the marigold's roots release a chemical, and this chemical keeps the beetles and the nematodes away. And um, it's really wonderful, but they attract beneficial bugs, such as the ladybugs. Oh my gosh, I always capture ladybugs when I'm bringing stuff in or out, and I put them in the house and they just, they stay on the plant. There's only 10, and they eat everything. Oh, but um, also lace wings and parasitic wasps. But, um, it's really great so each of those and then thanks to my neighbor we have borage borage is an old-fashioned favorite it was used in kitchens it's edible and um but what borage does is it, it attracts bees and butterflies and stuff but it repels the hornworms and cabbage worms, which is great. So there's going to be one on each side of this. So let me put those in. Okay, we're in an area next to the tomato cages and in front is the circle gardening. And we're going to do a variety of things. Some of it not today. In the back along the fence are going to be some sunflowers. When you plant sunflowers, you need to be very careful about planting them. You cannot plant them around some of your vegetables like beans and potatoes and even some flowers. Because anybody that's watched the fennel video, I'll link that. This flower has the allopathic properties. So they release a chemical that really gets rid of them. It's actually used for um, as a weed chemical but so if you still want to plant and buy those I keep broken containers I bury this into the ground these have really long roots and some of the other stuff except potatoes um, have more shallow roots and that bypasses that or they wouldn't get as much now right behind me These are gonna go in here. These are gumfrina, and thanks to a seasonal supplier, I was able to get them. I should have grown them, but I didn't. And um, these are beautiful, they're stunning, they're edible. So actually, throughout history, it was a sign or a symbol of immortality. Um, I think now with scientific research, we know the reason it helps people with breathing problems live longer, it has its high anti-inflammatory or inflammatory, I always mix that up, but this is, it's a wonderful herb for people that have um, breathing problems. I, that's all I could say, bronchitis, asthma. So, but these do more than that for my garden since I don't have any of that. Um, these are perfect to plant around tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplant because it brings in the beneficial bugs that get rid of all the insects that attack those. And so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant them here, sunflowers in the background, and then I'll show you what I'm planting on the side. 
All right, the next flowers that we're gonna put in, there's just gonna be two, and it's gonna be on both sides of the stone, are dahlias. I love these, they're a perennial if you bring them in, and I'll show you that. I have a video coming out later in the week or next week. Um, but these bring in the pollinators. They're so beautiful, and they really bush out, and actually, they're edible parts of them. Um, it's a main staple in Mexico and other countries. Although in Thailand, the dahlia can never be given as a wedding present. Do you know why? Because it represents unstable love. My garden, I'll take it. So let me put these in and let's go to the next section. In front of this urn where the tomatoes will cascade over, we're going to put some teddy bear sunflowers, which will be beautiful. They'll come up maybe two foot. And um, in front, I'm going to add some more floss flower. That'll be stunning. Next section. All right, I'm on the other side of the cage, and I'm going to plant these big ball marigolds, one of my favorites. The first marigold I planted. And it's gonna alternate. Marigold, pepper, marigold, pepper, all the way through. Okay, this beautiful flower is the 2017 All-American Selection winner. Um, this is called the Celosia or Coxcomb. This is a symbol of boldness. And I could see it because these get really bold flowers. I mean, they're stately. And um, they said that it helps tomatoes taste better and it ensures pollination and fruit set. So normally it likes in the ground. It doesn't like a lot of water, which is perfect, nor do tomatoes. I'm going to put one here, see what happens, and then I'm going to alternate when I put the tomatoes in. One more flower after this. Okay, I saved one of my favorites, the zinnia. The zinnia brings in the pollinators, it brings in the beauty. So I'm going to put two behind here and I'll just scatter them all through the garden. All right, we're done with the flowers for now. And now we have talked about the allium family. Now the allium family, the onions, the chives, and the leeks, they're so beneficial. Whether you eat them or not, they help get rid of aphids and other horrible insects. They also bring some good flavor for some of the vegetables. So between these flowers, I'm gonna plant some leeks, between each pepper, I'm going to put an onion because it'll help hold the peppers as they get bigger. I'll still put steaks, but they lean against them. And um, between every tomato, it gets a garlic or an onion. But And then we're finished. I'll see you then. All right, we finally finished planting the garden with companion plants. Now... I watched a video recently where this man was saying companion planting is nonsense, no scientific proof. It just makes it pretty, might bring some bees. Okay, before insecticides and everything else, they have been companion planting since the time of gardens and it works and it works without chemicals, although some of these plants release a chemical. But there's a lot of studies, and I gave you some of the stuff. It's important to companion plant. It brings in the pollinators. It helps get rid of pests naturally. It helps improve the flavor of some of the crops that you're growing. And for me, yeah, it does beautify it. First thing in the morning, I want to sit out here and drink my coffee and just look. It's a wonderful thing. So send me your stories. I would love to hear from you. We're a growing channel. Please, we need people to subscribe. 
and share with their friends. We appreciate every one of you. And the next project is right behind me. We have to plant the tomato cage. I'll see you there. This is Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm. Please subscribe.